into spitball and sports. This is a special edition. As you can see, it's the Stanley Cup final start today. Um, a little bit here, Florida versus the Vegas Golden Knights. And um, wanted to do a little something real quick to, uh, into, um, you know, kind of like preview the series, the finals. And who better to have with me than a guy who's the most busiest podcaster, radio guy that I've ever seen. Um, he's at full press, NHL, but you can hear him from anywhere from Vermont to Mississauga, Ontario, to all up and down the eastern seaboard. I'm sure going west, too. Here he is, Jim Berenger. Hey, Jim. John, thanks for having me back on the podcast. Yes, thank yeah. you for those kind words, man. Yeah, you're busy. You're very busy. <laughs> oh, busy time of year. Uh, I just want to plug something real quick. Sure. If you guys haven't checked out special edition of Full Press NHL podcast, I was lucky and blessed enough to have Bill Lindsay on mm. yesterday. Got to talk with him, talking Florida Panthers, his time in the league, what he feels wow. is going to be the keys to the series. So it was really, I was really lucky and blessed and such a good guy and hopefully to do it again. But if you guys haven't checked that out yet, please do because it's, it's worth the listen. Yes, definitely. And we, we've we shared it and we'll share it again. It's worth, yeah, very, how lucky, how nice. That's yeah, awesome. He, he's a really good dude. I mean, obviously you can see him NHL uh, network. Yep. He's an analyst on there. He's their color guy. Uh, you know, I just reached out to him. He was like, yeah, we're t went getting back and forth real easy about it. Uh, he, he was awesome. And, you know, great, great insight uh, to the series. All right. Before we get into this, the final. I got to ask you one question about something that happened today. Mike Babcock ends up in Columbus. Um, the Leafs are finally done paying him, I think. So maybe it's time for a job. But I want to know what your thoughts on Mike Babcock are. So, all right, a couple of things. I'm going to take all the stuff that I've heard and read and seen, and I'm going to take that out of the equation. I'm going to look at Mike Babcock, the coach. Okay, Mike Babcock, the coach, took two teams to a Stanley Cup final. He's won a Stanley Cup. He's a good coach. I'm just not sure in today's day and age with the players on that team if he needs to come back. And Now, maybe he's learned things because he did work. He was an advisor in college with the University of Vermont. You know, he was seen there. He was doing other roles. Maybe he's learning to adjust his style to today's game because we know who's on the Columbus Blue Jackets. Johnny Goudreau, Patrick Laine. Guys like that, you got Wenberg there as well. But that team is not going to be ready to compete next season. It's going to be a while for that team because the Armo line has work to do uh, with the goaltending and getting that team in order. They have a nice roster. Babcock's a good coach, but again, we're going back to the retreads. I like the cycle that I'm seeing in Montreal, in Washington, in Nashville. Bring in some of these younger guys. I'm not saying like 20 something coaching, but, the, but look at Spencer Carberry in Washington the guys, 41 years old. He's only a couple years older than their oldest player on a team. Like it feels like he's just removed. He's known the organization. So I think we need to see some more of that going on in the national hockey league. I like the fact that Martin St. Louis in Montreal, we know that team's not going to be good, but again, Babcock, the guy and Babcock, the coach, are two different people. Yeah. Yeah. It's funny. And real quick on him, I think it's almost a similar situation to Toronto because this team is young, just like the Leafs were at the time. And um, maybe it's a reclamation. May you know, you might be right. He probably learned a lot being at the University of Vermont. He had to be dealing with kids more. So uh, I hope, you know, what? I hope the best for him. I agree with you, though. I like the younger guys to come around. Yeah. I mean, I th feel like that's the way it's going. I had a conversation with somebody, you know, before we were coming on here, we we're just uh, on Twitter and we we're talking about it. And I'm like, this doesn't make any sense. Like, I, I understand the move. I guess that's what they want to go with. But again, he's far removed from the league. Uh, granted, now, I don't know when he officially can start. I believe it's not till July because the Leafs pay him out until June 30th. It might be a similar situation with uh, Brad Trey Living. He can be doing all the things he can do as a general manager, but he can't be at the draft table because the Flames – basically said you can't work the draft. It might be a similar situation where, yes, he can be introduced as coach. He can do some things, but he can't officially start his duties until the Leafs officially stop paying him. 
So, uh, and they maybe could work out details on that, which most likely, to, if it, that's going to happen, they'll probably be ironed out next week or something. I guarantee you one of the off day, the two off days between games two and three, Babcock will probably be announced as a coach. Yeah, I can't wait for that press conference. So now the biggest news, what we got here. Here we go. Stanley Cup Finals. The Florida Panthers, we didn't expect. Obvious, no one expected. Vegas kind of did. I want to get from you um, right off the bat, I, just like an overfeel. What do you feel about the series going into this, knowing what you know, what you've seen throughout the entire playoffs? What are your thoughts as we get ready for game one? Excited. I'm really excited to see the, how these teams match up. And we know Florida, the rust, the rest. Is it a good thing? Is it a bad thing? I mean, you know, Bill Lindsay made up a great point. He's like, your body, you need to rest. It's great, but you don't want too many days off. I think Florida's going to start off slow. I think it's going to take them a little bit to get into the game. I think Vegas, yeah, I know they've only been four days off, but they play Monday, so I think they're into it. And and look, the stage, like, right? You know, Petrangelo said it yesterday, media day. It's not just the games. It's everything around the Stanley Cup final, the media day, going through the process. Like, all that stuff is new to this Panthers team. I mean, I think media day – only started in like 2012 because right. Eric Stahl didn't go through this. Like he's been through right. a Stanley Cup <laughs> final, but he hasn't gone right. through like all that stuff. Like those guys haven't gone through it like this. And, you know, Vegas, the players yeah. have been there. It Look, I, it's, it's a good matchup because I want to see how Florida comes out to me. I think I know how Vegas is going to come out just the way Bruce Cassidy coached. I'm interested to see how Florida comes out. How does... I'm going to ask you both sides. How does how does Vegas win the series? What do they have to do? How do they win? So Vegas, we saw what they did against Dallas, right? When Vegas wants to take over a series and take over games, they do it. Score first, score often. Game's usually over in the first period. Games three of the Western Conference Final, game six of the Western Conference Final. Series game over, done with. They took the stars right out of it, and they can do it. When they want to do it, they're going to do it. They roll four lines. They're heavy. They're physical. They remind me of the Capitals in 2018, while Florida reminds me of Vegas in 2018. Yes, but Florida – see, here's the thing. For, for Vegas, we'll stay there because I know Florida's later. But Vegas, they, they like to take away the middle of the ice. They don't really take too many penalties. Uh, you know, They don't make too many mistakes in their own zone. And they just forecheck the hell out of you. And they just take away the middle of the ice. And they don't really give you a lot of chances uh, to score goals. And when they're, and all four lines are clicking. And all four lines can score. And I think that's that's the key to Vegas right now. I mean, Aiden Hill's been good. He's been good enough. I mean, he's definitely been... He definitely won some games for Vegas that they probably didn't deserve to win. But, you know, he's making the saves when he needs to. And I think the fact that they're heavy, they're physical, they're not going to be pushed around. I give them the edge. Yeah, definitely. We're with Jim Berenger, and you can see him all over, but full press NHL and everywhere. Man, I, I like I tell you, everyone, you got to go to your Twitter at, at Jim Berenger because that's where you can see everything. That's all right. You can right there. everything, nightcap recaps, which we'll, we'll be back tonight after game one, post game, do a right. quick recap of the game. Um, but yeah, I'm everywhere. You check it out. Um, you bring up an observation. It feels like. I haven't done them in a while because we've been yeah. off for four games. Yeah. Uh, but look, Vegas to me, it just they look like the better team. They feel like they're the better team. They're on a mission. Bill Foley, six, he said it, press conference. He's like, we're going to win a Stanley Cup in the first six years. Well, here we are. Four we are. trips to the Western Conference Final, two trips to the Stanley Cup Final. Here we are. Wow. Yeah. All right. So now the daunting task, how does Florida possibly pull another upset as they've upset everybody? And win the Stanley Cup. I think it starts with goaltending. I think it starts with Sergei Bobrovsky. I think he's got to be like he was in the other rounds. I mean, he's got to make saves. He's got to keep the team in it because we know what Vegas can do. Vegas could take the game away in the first period. I mean, we, we saw it against Carolina game two. Remember, yeah. Carolina was only up one nothing. They were outshot 20 to 6 in the first period. If it's not for Bobrovsky, that's probably a runaway for Carolina and it's a different series. Unfortunately, they didn't get another one by him. Uh, he's got to be good. He can't give up three goals. Uh, I know that he gave up three goals against, you know, Boston and, and uh, Carolina, and, you know, but and they were able to win it. But, again, Vegas is a different animal. Uh, you know, as much as their power play is there, they're going to have to score five on five because Vegas doesn't give you po power play time. 
Matthew Kachuk is going to be there. And let's see if their aggressive forecheck can make another good defensive team make mistakes. And they can put those mistakes in the back of the net because they did it to Boston and they did it to Carolina. Toronto, we know. Sorry, these fans. Not as good defensively as those other two teams, but still pretty good. They were better. But, you know, they knocked off three of the best teams in the Eastern Conference to get here. I just don't know with the time off, the rust. But I want to see if they can come out fast and look good. Okay, maybe change my mind on something. But that time off is in the back of my mind that, you know, Vegas, you know, they have to start strong. I think it's important for Florida to get the first goal here because then they can settle in. The nerves get calm. If they don't score first, it's going to – I know they're the cardiac cats, but playing in that building this time of year, very difficult. Now, one player um, – two well, here. One player from Vegas, not named Eichel or Aiden Hill. Who is someone that would be very important that you think could be like a difference maker, possibly be a, a um, Con Smythe Award winner, just not one of those two guys? Um, I'm going to go with uh, Barbashev, Ivan Barbashev. I like the way he's playing. Well, he's on that top line with mm-hmm. Eichel and Marcia Sill. He's come up big for this team, uh, you know, ever since the acquisition. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Don't be surprised if uh, July 1st he's resigned by the Vegas Golden Knights. Um, with the cap going up, which it seems like it's going to. I mean, I like the way the original Misfits have been playing. Carlson and Marsha Sill, those guys are, you know, they come up with these timely goals. I mean, they just able to roll four lines. You know, Mark Stone's been a player too, but Barbershev, for some reason, has been sticking out to me for uh, Vegas. Now the Florida side. don't uh, We can't use Kachuk or uh, Bobrovsky. Yo, double down. Behringer push, trademark. Barkov. Huh? Yeah. Barkov, look, he was a difference maker besides Kachuk in the, in the conference final. He got his game going. I did not know this information that I found out yesterday talking to Bill Lindsay. Barkov was sick in the first round of the playoffs. So he, huh. uh, yeah, that was, that was interesting to find out that he was sick. Uh, that's why he didn't have his best in the first round. And he's starting to get his game going again. He's very good defensively. I know he still put up numbers, but... I think now you're going to see the best uh, Alexander Barkov, and I think I'm going to double down with it. I mean, we're in Vegas. Why not, right? Right. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. And continuing on that, Barkov, I saw on FanDuel, is plus 12,000 to win the con Smythe. Why not? Why couldn't he have eight goals? You know what I mean? Why not? Why? Because if he plays that well, Florida may have a chance. They need him. They need him. I mean, look, they have a lot of other guys, too, like Verhage and Duclair and, and guys like that. Montour slowed down a little bit, but they they really need him defensively. Ekblad's playing well. Um, Radko Gudis. But again, if you compare both teams, right, you look at the Vegas roster, you look at the – and the, um, it's about to say Tampa. I'm so used to that being in the final. Another team for Florida. Florida's there. You just look at the size and the average, like, weight of the team. Vegas is a heavier team. I mean, especially on the back end with Martinez and Petrangelo, McNabb, Nicholas Haig. I mean, I mean, Florida's no slouches either, but that's, I wouldn't want to go up against that Vegas defense. No, no, I know. You know, before we got to let you go, I got to ask you a couple more things. First off, tonight's game one. Mm-hmm. Um, just for tonight, what do you see? Ha- what if you put on – the crystal ball, you know, looking at crystal ball. What do you think happens tonight? Game one. I think Vegas wins game one at home. I think that I, I have a feeling that's going to happen. I mean, you know, Bruce Cassidy said in, in the media day that, you know, the Bruins, don't forget the Bruins were off for about 10 days in 2019 before they took on the blues started off slow. They were able to win game one, but again, the Bruins were the home team in that one. Um, I think Vegas, I think Vegas comes out strong. I think Vegas gets the first goal tonight and I don't think they look back. I mean, I think Florida is going to keep it close, but, just something about Vegas, first game, uh, they're just playing well. I know everybody's picking against Florida. I know people are going to pick Florida. Look, I heard it in the locker room yesterday. You you know, nobody's doubting them. I said, everybody's doubted Vegas through the first three rounds of the, the sure. playoffs, too. I said, look at it. They were the most under-the-radar first seed going into the playoffs. My friends were like, oh, no, no, no way. I'm like, wait a minute. I pulled it up. I was like, the experts, a lot of experts picked Winnipeg because of Connor Hellebuck. A lot everybody almost picked Edmonton to win it because of, you know, their power play and McDavid and Drysidle. There were people that picked Dallas to win against mm-hmm. Vegas. Vegas has just done their business and they've made it look like 
I mean, this team, you talk about team on a mission. I know everybody, team of destiny, Florida, all that stuff. Usually the better team finds a way to win the Stanley Cup. Yeah. So let's get your um, complete prediction. How many games does this go? And if you don't, if you're, I don't know, if you're not a guy that gives predictions, it's okay. I know some guys don't. If you have it, prediction, game, and maybe a Conn Smythe winner for the audience. I mean, I like Vegas. I'm, I'm not going to get go off my pick. I've been picking them since the second round. I just think they're just a good, better, they're just a good team, complete team. I'm not saying Florida's not a complete team. Florida fans don't heckle me about that. I just the way the games I've watched, I've watched all the playoffs, but the way Vegas has looked so dominant in so many games just says to me this is their year to win the Stanley Cup. I just have this feeling. Uh, if I had to put money on it, I probably the bet the number the betting number is six. So I, I, that's probably the number I would do it in. I hope they win it at home. It'd be nice to see it in five, but I don't think so. I think with this way this playoffs has gone, it's uh, it's been a uh, road team that usually wins that closes it out. I mean they've won it the outside of the first round. They won it in they won the second round and the conference final on the road. So. Con Smythe, Con Smythe. I'll probably say Eichel, especially just because I think. But unless you know, I mean, Carlson's got ten goals. Marshall still's up there. If those two guys go off, I would say that. But if Eichel, I mean, Eichel's been so good that if he has an explosive final, I think they give it to him. All right, Jim. I gotta let you go. I know you got so much more to do, (laughs) and you're gonna be doing for the people that are watching. If they want to see you later, you're gonna be doing a post game. Yeah, so I'm going to do post game. So I got – so 6 p.m., let's talk sports. Uh, let's talk – Pox, you and I will be yep. doing a quick preview of the game. 7 p.m., at Full Press NHL on Twitter and Full Press coverage or hockey on Facebook. One of the two will carry it. Do a quick pregame, another pregame show. And then I have the post game one reaction video will be up nice. on my Twitter, at Jim Berenger. So – Check it out. It's going to be there. The NHL observations are everything. Um, we're going to be rocking and rolling. The Stanley Cup final is here. Thank God. <laughs> there it is. That's right. Thank God, man. All right, Jim. I'm going to let you go. I'll be seeing you in a few minutes, of course. But um, we appreciate you taking the time. And I'll be reaching out more for Spitball and Sports to get you back on, of course. Probably before the series ends, I'm sure. Absolutely. I'd love to be on here. You know I love talking hockey. I know yeah. you love to it do it too and it's always a pleasure to be on with you guys you guys do a great job thanks jim be talking to you talk to you soon all right and that's jim berenger from nhl full press nhl and like he said go to at jim berenger it's b-i-r-i-n-g-e-r on twitter you'll see everything he's also on facebook too so you can find him there but that's where you'll see it all he's everywhere you can see him on you can hear him on radio AM radio to uh, everywhere you could think of. And he's got a lot of great insight. So, all right. So tonight, enjoy the game. Um, Starting at eight o'clock Eastern time, the Florida Panthers against the Vegas Golden Knights. And we'll be back as we normally are every Friday at 6 p.m. All right, everybody. So take care and enjoy the games.